What is happening everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works and we are ready for day two of Blade Show 2022. We got it right here. What is happening everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com and I got my boy Bryce here. Bryce, good to see you brother. Oh, good to see you always too, good to see you and it's always good to be here at Blade Show. I mean this is our second Blade show this time around, and uh, we're having a blast seeing and talking to everybody. So you've got some really cool new stuff, and we just got it in our studio literally the day before we left. Oh. And uh, I got a chance to look at it, play with it, but we haven't had a chance to do a video with it just yet. This stuff is really exciting, so let's talk about it a little bit. Totally, yeah. We got a lot of cool new stuff. It came out with the 2023 preview. This is a Lucas Burnley Butte, featuring our deadbolt lock. Our deadbolt lock is invented by Flavio Icoma, and it's what we do with CRKT. We allow other designers to utilize the kind of their designs and, and kind of think around it, which is really cool. And Lucas decided to make a really heavy working knife, which I think matches the deadbolt very well. Absolutely. Super strong, safe and easy to open, keeps your hands out of the way, but also get all the strength out of a couple pins that wedge themselves in that blade. D2 steel on the, the blade, so really tough working. Back here, you got a nice, like, medium grit G10, so on a bigger handle, so it's gonna be really comfortable to use for a long term. But just a really kind of classic overall American hunting fixed blade shape. Absolutely, and I'm digging the the fit and finish and the attention to detail with that with that collar right there around the deadbolt lock. Yeah. I mean, that color really looks super cool with those with those uh, scales right there. And I like Lucas actually. He's a he likes to have a not so deep carry pocket clip. Just to give you a little hint, just to let you know what you're carrying. Here it is. Yeah. I like that. Take a look at that tail. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little stick out of your pocket. You'll know yep. you're carrying a Lucas Burnley knife too. I, exactly. I, that's kind of cool. It used to be all deep carry pocket clips, but now we can have we can show off the pocket. It's candy, like a, you know? it's like a signature. Yeah. yeah you got to yeah. show it off a little bit. I love that. That's really cool. Really cool. That's the beaut. Next up is another deadbolt knife, another actually deadbolt. from Flavio Icoma, yes. and this is the smallest knife we featured the deadbolt lock on yet. This is the Attaboy, a little bit smaller, kind of a little bit of a, maybe a Polar Large kind of influence yeah. there with that front finger choil. Really locks the hand in well, gives you a lot of good detail control. Again, we got D2 on the blade, tough working. A couple of good spots of jimping up here, different thumb positions. Obviously the large deadbolt button in the back here. And uh, just a really cool little Flavio Icoma piece. Heck yeah, that's that one's super cool. And I love where the, where the actual flipper is yeah that's so that's very unique totally and uh that one with the hole in the blade i think you can actually get a finger in there too and i might be able to yeah <laughs> you can do it yeah you're teaching me stuff on the fly that's pretty slick right there but the the little flipper too is kind of cool and that we're, because of the deadbolt we were able to do that normally a flipper right in this position would get in the way of your liner lock right. or it would hit a stop pin but deadbolt we're kind of thinking outside the box so. absolutely pretty cool Next up, you guys might be familiar with this one. Oh, yeah. That's a home front. We released this thing uh, a couple years back, featuring our field strip mechanism. Yep. We've upgraded it since then, and uh, we wanted to bring the knife back in just a regular assisted opening version. So, Ken Onion Blade, obviously. There's all that blade. There's something about a Ken Onion knife. Like, oh, that's yeah. a That's an onion. It reminds me a lot of his earlier work and yeah. some of the other classic knives I love from Ken. Got a nice belly on it there. A whole lot of belly. It's all about maximizing your cutting edge compared to the handle ratio. Yeah. Really cool. And all the little touches kind of have that World War II oh, yeah. government issue look to them. Uh -huh. And the color drab, we really nailed it a little bit. Last time it was a little bit brighter, but this is much more reminiscent of like a, like a 1943 olive drab, which yeah. I think is pretty cool. Really so. dig that thing. But, it looks super heavy duty. It is heavy duty. It's going to be a nice working knife right there. Totally. This one's... This is the one that's in my pocket more than out the rest of the line so far. <laughs> Stickly Ken. This is the Stickler yes. by Jeff Park. So Jeff works with Ken. He works, uh, just kind of learns the tricks of the trade from him. He based this one on actually a melon testing knife, which I didn't know existed. Oh until. yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. But I can see the influence and uh, it would make a really good produce knife, how long and thin it is. Oh yeah. It's 12C27 on the blade, which I, I love Sandvik steels. Very fine and I'm a mediocre sharpener and I can get a really good edge on there. Exactly. So it's, I mean, it holds an edge good. It's got really good properties and it's not difficult to sharpen. No. That's, I mean, it's it's a great all around blade steel. Totally. Aluminum on the scale, the flipper acts as a little reminder where your thumb go or your finger goes. And another little piece of Ken, in, Ken Onion influence here, 
on the backspacer, you can see it's actually milled out. And uh, that's again, just to add that couple extra millimeters of blade length. Yeah. So a little piece of Ken Onion sort of influence in a Jeff Park. That's, that's, that's pretty really neat. cool, yeah, pretty absolutely. Neat. Now, the Campano, is that, is that, am I pronouncing that right? Because that's the way I've always said it. Correct. So this is a, a, a cool new version of that one. So that one did really well. And I, I dig utility knives that, you know, double as something else. Um, and this one's super cool. I love the color scheme, but also the blade. Totally. Yeah, we went with a little more of a Warncliffe blade on this one. Still still a slip joint and surprisingly ergonomic for a uh, carabiner. Right. I'm always impressed that you can do this, but Mike Bond really wanted to, he saw a lot of people carrying their keys on their belt loops. Yep. And he wanted to add utility to the carabiner and make it a more pleasant experience. And he added like these little wings, just make it easier to find, yeah. get on the belt loop that way instead of sticking your finger in a cheap carabiner gate yeah. like everyone's got. You know, so. I've got a I've got a really good friend of mine that I bought one of these for, um, a female, and this is exactly what she wanted because um, female pockets on their pants suck. Yep. They're horrible. Totally. They're, they have no room in them. Um, and she was like, I need a knife that I can't that I don't need to put in my pocket that I can just put on my belt loop. Totally. And I showed her the first one, and she was like, Oh my god, that I have to have it. And now she carries it everywhere she goes because pockets suck. Yeah, so. totally. That's exactly, I, yeah. Our, our quality control uh, manager, Rochelle, she carries it this way, loves this thing. She's probably one of our biggest uh, knife fans in the building. Nice. So, gotta give her a call out. But that's a, yeah, really cool piece. I like the intentionality that Mike Bond has. Yeah. Everyone should check out TI2 Designs. Check out his dope, like, uh, titanium pens and money clips. Right. So cool. I love his story. So, I'm really excited to have another Mike Bond. Heck yeah. Yeah. Next up. This is a Robert Carter. It's called the Ox Cart. Kind of a tank of a name for a little bit of a tank of a knife. Right. That's it's a like, thick little beastie. Yeah. Look at the blade stock on that. Oh, that's insane. But what's really cool? We really hot. We really put an extreme hollow grind on here. Or right, we do a really good job at some of our really extreme hollow grinds, and uh, it really brings the edge down. So it's still a really good cutter. Frame lock, assisted opening. Um, it's a really good beater every day in the pocket. A good simple pocket clip. I, I like me a good simple pocket clip, and that's a good solid simple pocket yeah. clip right there. And the thing just, I mean, with the coloring and everything, it just looks so classy. It does. The grind work, got the swedge up top, catches the light, kind of got that gem shiny kind of thing going on. It does. It looks super classy. Really it's, digging that one. It's catching those grind lines. I love seeing grind lines yeah, on play. Oh, yeah. That's kind of fun. Next up, one everybody will be real familiar with, yes. especially the SMKW crowd. This is another minimalist. This is a minimalist spear point. And look at how thick that puppy is. You nailed it. Oh. Yeah, it's based on his X2, which is twice as thick as a regular minimalist. Mm -hmm. So minimalist fans, you're gonna get your hands on this. It's gonna feel foreign. It feels a little yeah. bit different at first, but a little bit heavier duty, harder working minimalist knife. Thick. You got a little bit of a fuller there. Uh, same jimping, same amazing ergonomic. Really, the minimalist is a handle, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a handle that we, that we use different blade shapes on, but I have yet to run into anybody who's like, that's an uncomfortable handle, which I think right. is incredible. Yeah. It's incredible you can make ergonomics that way. So. Oh, yeah. And fits so many different hands. Now, I gotta I gotta ask, when are we gonna get our exclusive in D2? Oh, we might, uh, we might be in discussion. <laughs> Stay tuned. SMKW.com. There we go. You know where to find them. <laughs> Last up. James Williams Skagox. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, uh, James is a fun designer to work with. I, I've always liked his Japanese like recreation swords, taking stuff that's been perfected over hundreds of years and making it out of modern materials. And this is exactly the same. It's just a Viking battle axe. But you can see the big beard on there if you ever find yourself going yep. up against a shield wall. It's also good. <laughs> It's also good you can choke up, do more of a defensive position, and then throw it up if you need to right. start adding more leverage. A little hook on the bottom there, really just, this thing just wants to swing. And the grind is not like that of an ax. It is just a straight sort of like knife grind. Mm -hmm. It's not convex or, uh, yeah, convex at all. So it's meant to slice. That's wicked. And you know what? I really want to get my hands on that and throw it. I'd be curious if you can. I'd be curious if you can throw it with a little hook there. I'm I, sure I if think, somebody might be I think it'll actually give you a little bit more rotation there. Okay. I think it, I think it might work. Well, I need some demo so. videos. I haven't been able to throw one yet, so. I think we'll have to do that. I just go, out, that, I just go out and give uh, some cardboard boxes to business with this 
That's awesome. Bryce, dude, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, folks, stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. And right here, I've got the man, the myth, the legend, Jimmy Slash. Dude, How you doing, sir? thank you so much for joining us. We oh, you're totally it. welcome. Thanks for being here. So we're hanging out here at the Cold Steel booth, and uh, you've got something to show us that's, uh, that's Dude, pretty cool. just came out yesterday. If you get one of these here, you, you and your friends are the only ones that are going to have them in the country. This is the Engage, just came out. S35VN, and that's not the most exciting thing. The most exciting thing is the new lock. This is the Atlas lock, Cold Steel developed and it's probably one of the strongest locks on the market they drilled a hole in one of them in fact it's over there hung 725 pounds off the edge of this thing and it didn't That's budge insane. that is crazy 725 pounds 725 pounds check it out on youtube amazing and right now it's only available here at the blade show so so when are those going to be available for uh, retailers probably in the next couple weeks they're going to be coming out so freaking cool and what's, exciting. what's the price point on these this is 175 here at blade show they're oh. probably going to be around the 220 range and they start out at the, at the retailers that is freaking cool right there oh so buttery smooth super smooth and super strong can't hardly beat it that is awesome i am digging that that is really cool and Dude, uh, so we did, um, we've been doing our Blade Steel series, okay. and I had to give you a shout out because we were doing one on, I believe it was 80 CRV2 or something like that, and we were talking about how a lot of uh, guys in the Blade Sports cutting competitions use that Blade Steel oh, for yeah. their choppers. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I need to demonstrate this, but I don't have, it. and so I ended up stealing one of your videos and giving you a shout out. I was like, oh, cool. you gotta take a look at this guy right here because there's nobody better in the business doing it than this guy right here. So. Oh, I appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Absolutely. Folks, stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. What is happening, everybody? Day two of Blade Show 2022 right here. And look who we found. JB, Big Red EDC right here. Dude, it is so nice to finally meet you. It is great you. to finally meet you guys. It's, so, it's been a lot I of mean, fun. I we, mean, we've had this relationship online. That, yes. That kind of sounds bad. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I think our significant others might uh, might not approve of that. But yeah. we've, we've been communicating. We've seen each other, talked to each other, and Absolutely. done uh, live chats and stuff like that with each other for a long time now. Yep. And yep. it's nice to finally actually get to meet yeah. you. Um, of course, you're way out on the West Coast out there. Um, My first time in Atlanta, Blade Show, Bless period. Your heart. Atlanta, period, but Blade Show for sure. <laughs> Wow, man. So you're having a good time? Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? So you've you've experienced one day so far. Yes. What are your highlights for that first day? The people. It's always the people. I mean, I come with delusions of grandeur that I'm gonna film all this stuff and <laughs> right because I talked to you guys yesterday of course and I was like, yeah, well, you know, I'll stop by and hopefully we can shoot something and it just <laughs> I get a couple of maybe two, three minute videos and it's like, okay, I'm good. Right. But I mean, it's an incredible experience. It is. Having all the people in the community here in one place yes. at the same time. Absolutely. And you know, we talk about, I, you know, it's one of those things too that I keep saying, you know, I, Mari Ford, LT Wright, all these guys, I'm like, they're so nice, but that's the whole community. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of brashness out there. Um, and a lot of egos, but at the same time, there's a lot of really cool people that oh, are super down to earth amazing. and incredibly helpful people in this business. That it's just out, it's outrageous the yep. support you get. And, and that's just it. Well, like you were saying, you know, you talk to people, I mean, followers of my channel and stuff like that, and people just walk up to you and they're like, Big Red, and I'm like, hey. Who are you? <laughs> I see like, this little tiny I'm round. So and so, and I'm like, oh man! You know they've been following the channel yeah. for a couple of years. You know. Yeah. It's I just really spoke cool. to one of our uh, followers, Anfield Dragon. Okay. Um, I okay. spoke to him and his family. Yeah. Super nice people. Yeah. And it's so nice. That's one thing that I'm loving about Blade Show is getting to finally put a face with the names that are out there in our Absolutely. comment section. Absolutely. So, Dude, we're having a blast. Thank yes. you so much for stopping and talking dude, to us, thank baby. You. Thank you and, very um, much. We'll see you around. All uh, right. We're going to be hanging out. So. Oh, we'll definitely be around. And folks, we got to go talk to the Bearded Wonder some more. There we go. <laughs> so, folks, this is day two of Blade Show 2022. Stay tuned for more from right here. 
What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, SMKW.com, and I've got Seth here from Williams of Evie. Seth, good brother, to see you, brother. See Absolutely, you man. Now, you guys have got a lot of new stuff. As always. I mean, you guys are killing it. Absolutely killing it. So let's go over um, some of the new stuff you guys have got here and uh, what you guys have got going on. Definitely, definitely. We've got, uh, we've got, I gotta pass off this bag here. Real Absolutely. Quick. Sorry, guys. Good. I just realized that I've got the cash in there. <laughs> All right. So um, everything from like pure prototypes to actual knives that are in production right now. Right, to stuff that's gonna be coming out within the next few weeks and, and then throughout the rest of the year. So. Um, this is a lineup that I'm super excited about. Like, like we always come out with awesome stuff, but like we've got a lot of hits here. Yeah, so it's, absolutely. It's good. This is good. Um, first up, let's just get the let's just talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> All right. I saw this immediately, and I was like, "Is that a lock? A combination lock on the back side of that?" That is exactly what I said. I, I saw a drawing of this thing, and I was sending emails to the factory. I was like. Really? We're really doing this? <laughs> we're, we're yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so and so we've been listening to people, talking to people, and they're, they're looking at it, and they're going, thinking to themselves, you know, okay, like, what would I use that for? Um, typically, the response is, okay, if I wanted to uh, have a knife sitting out at my home and I've got a toddler, right, I can lock that blade shut, and they're, they're not going to get that 20 CV blade out and, and cut something right. that's not supposed to be cut, right? So that's one aspect, but, uh, you know, let us know in the comments what you would do with it absolutely yeah i mean that's i'm gonna have to think on that now i think that's uh i mean that's a really cool concept just for the novelty of it yeah but also yeah. it is practical it does have its practical uses it does it's, a, it's got a great action it feels just like a like a wee knife yeah wood fill um with your your titanium scales uh, your 20 cv blade and everything uh thumb stud action um, and then yeah that's got this little this little bar right here that uh, when you push that forward and change up your combination, it locks it so you can't open that blade. Nice. So it's it's fun. It's something different. We release enough knives that we have the ability to just like try something new and outside of the box, and you know that's what we did here, and it's it's really fun. That's freaking cool. And right on down the line, this thing right here is super unique. Yeah. So what is what's that type? It's the ty typhus. Typhus. Yes. Okay. And so you're looking at the same knife here, just in different finishes. Right, so this this push dagger right here will come with a sheath, and we don't have that yet. This is a pretty early prototype, um, but should be should be available sometime this year. I hope um, it's a push dagger that converts into a usable pocket knife. Right, that is insane. Which is is just awesome because like personally I don't carry a lot of stuff I just, right. I just never have um, I would carry a push dagger as a defense item but then I'm like okay well I've got a blade do I really want to carry another blade right well you know with this like I don't have to because I still have a usable pocket a practical knife, use right? knife that can also be a self-defense so that I'm not like out trying to cut an apple with my push dagger <laughs> like this you know so yeah it's it's cool that's freaking awesome and uh, that one's coming in with the 20 CV blade. Um, yep. And uh, the handle material's titanium. Mm -hmm. That's just insane. I absolutely love that. Can't wait to see those in production. Yeah, me too, me too. That's gonna be a good one. And this Soothsayer, oh my gosh. You talk about beautiful. That Soothsayer is insanely gorgeous get right that, there. Get that titanium or carbon fiber copper handle in there. Isn't that gorgeous? That's insane. I love it. That's, that's my favorite. Well, that one and the next one. <laughs> my two favorite handles that we've come out right. with recently. Beautiful. That is gorgeous. Now, are these actual in production already? Very, very, very close. Dealers okay. will have these soon. I, I, I don't know exactly when, but, but yes. Very this, soon. This is a production version. Okay. Um, so, which means that they're, it's going to be one of the next models to be released. Gotcha. This guy right here. Uh, you're familiar with the Synergy 2? Yep. Okay, we've got the Synergy 2 V2 here. It's got a drop point blade instead of that upswept Persian. Right. And we've got a new milling pattern in the handle. And then this is a new carbon fiber uh, pattern as well in the inlay on this one. That is and wicked man, looking. Isn't that sweet? It's it's a pretty, pretty knife. This is our integral frame lock. Beautiful so, relief cuts. One and piece so of titanium. One piece construction. And you know, 
not a lot of people are doing that because it takes some tricky work it's to align hard. Yeah. It's not easy. Right. People don't understand that. You're talking about a single solid piece, so you end up getting this nice, clean look with no screws, no nothing. Yeah. And uh, I, I think a lot of people don't realize the beauty that is in that. I yeah. think that's phenomenal. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic piece. Um, we not only do you have uh, you know that one piece construction, so you've got that perfectly smooth um, spine of the handle there, but we've also got um, the contouring in the handle. The fits your palm swell really well, yeah. and everything. It's just it just feels really really good in the hand. So. Absolutely. And that new carbon fiber pattern in there is just, just smoke beautiful. Yeah. Smoking. All right, moving on, uh, new Ostop L design. We've been doing a ton of stuff with him. Um, man, what a what an awesome guy. We just He's been to, rocking it out. Dude, he is rocking it out. Um, so this is called the uh, Baloo. Um, kind of a bolster lock-ish. Um, I'm still I'm still looking for the name for this when we've got a, a scale kind of over the frame lock. Right. But <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's kind of like a bolster lock. Frame liner bolster lock yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. But again, a lot of stuff from Osapel that's been really, really, really cool. So we're excited about this design. I got a couple other things from Civivi coming out with him as well. Nice. All right, next one. Um, we got our in house design called the Starhawk. Uh, this guy reminds me a little bit of the Gava that we used to have. Um, okay, the yeah. Gava. Yeah. But um, full titanium handle, 20 CV blade steel, and uh, 2.81 inch blade length. I think my favorite thing about this knife is just that little grind, uh, the swedge on the top there, how it yep. comes off of that reverse tonto point. Like it just looks. I mean, it, it's it's one of those things you didn't have to do it, but yeah, yeah, you did, and it just adds to that fit and finish. Sometimes the little things are just like, yeah. just like stand and jump out, and they're like, yeah, I think that's Absolutely. really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, as far as interesting locks, this next next one is wicked. Yeah. And I am absolute. Oh, that was insane. It's so good. It's that, so good. Absolutely insane. So. That was, I mean, that's just ridiculous. I mean, super smooth, just unbelievable. And the pocket clip. Yeah. I didn't even notice the pocket clip until just now. Yeah. I looked at this thing yesterday. It's so it's so smooth. So this is the Snex design. It is. Yep. We had we had a handful of these here for sale at the show, and and they went Friday oh, morning just like that. Absolutely. So this will be coming out soon. Um, within the next 60 days or so, I think we should see this one available for purchase. That thing is gorgeous, super slick, and I love seeing the innovation that you guys put out there. Um, now, this next one, so I have to admit, one of my favorite knives that I've bought since working for SMKW has been my Civivi Odeon. Uh -huh. And Ferrum Forge knocks it out of the park with their designs every time, and this is just another notch uh, in that belt from, for, from Ferrum Forge, yeah. I think. I mean, ergonomically and just as far as simplicity goes, I absolutely love this thing. So this is uh, the Wii trim version. Yep. Um, that's a little bit bigger. A little larger than the Odeon. Yep. A little bit smaller than the original Malice from yep. Wii. Yep. Exactly. I think that's and that's Middle what I love about it right yeah. there is yeah. the, so with the Odeon and with this, you've got so many different opening methods that you can do. Yes. Uh, especially with the button lock on this version. So the Odium had the liner lock, yep. and this one's got the button lock. So, you, I mean, super fidgety. If you're like me, like, I, I love sitting at my desk if I'm having to listen to something or if I'm on a Always. conference call or something. Always. I'm sitting there just playing with my knives. Yep. So, I mean, that's just beautiful. Now, when can we expect to see these on shelves? Also very, very soon. We have a few of them here um, right. that we've been selling at the show. Um, you're going to see these... 30 to 60 days. Nice. They'll be Absolutely. Available soon. I see you got uh, one of those in yeah. your pocket. Yeah. And when you pull it out, I, I don't know what it is. You know, somebody pulls out a button lock, I have to have one in my hand. Right. I don't know what it is. I just. Well, and I, I mean, to. you guys have been killing the button locks with the Civivi Elementum, the button lock. I mean, as soon as we got those in, it flew off the shelves. Yeah. So, I mean. A lot of, a lot of good button locks. Yeah. I got, uh, in fact, we've got uh, the Kulex as well. I got it. 
um, I'll have to grab one. Here we go. This guy right here just released, just launched. Um, this is a dom domicile version. So we have it in domicile and we have it in uh, 20 CV. That's gorgeous. But another, uh, but actually the first button lock that we did in the Wii line. Oh my gosh, like the domicile. It's it, it's, it's 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 more smooth than the 20 CV. It's just it's just ridiculous. Oh, that kills me. Oh my gosh, my my wallet cannot handle this. <laughs> it's oh insane. We've got of course a new version of the banter. Yep. We've got a so, micarta version coming out. So the the handle material is what's different. Yep, that's it. I mean that's and that has been a phenomenal design from the get go. With good reason. I mean, Ben Peterson is, I mean, ultra simplistic. Yeah. We talked to him yesterday, and uh, super simple, but so functional. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it, that speaks so much to his personality, too. It super does. simple, incredibly all about function. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely love that. Now, we've also got some new Civivi uh, knives. New Civivi, yeah, that's the, that's the Wii stuff there. Um, we've, got, we've got the new uh, Catalyst, the Catalyst 2, um, the Tough Knives design. This one I think is going to be a real hit. That's cool. Um, this, is like your, this is just like your ultimate user knife, right? And again, it's got my favorite, it's got the thumb stud. It's got a nice, uh, nice big flat ground blade. Feels really good. Thumb stud or flipper tab. Um, just an awesome CVV. We got uh, Nitro V blade still. Just under three inches on the blade. Um, this is it. This this knife just feels good. That it's one like, right there is. It's in the same class as uh, the Elementum. It's one of those. Just going to be a great all-around EDC knife. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tell you what, I had a guy. Usually I don't. I'm not able to spend very much time on our sales floor. The other day I was, and I was helping a guy out. And he had never actually looked at a Civivi. Mm -hmm. And um, he was just looking for a general EDC. I ended up showing him like five or 10. He ended up looking for one knife. He bought three. Okay, yeah. Bought three. And I mean, that speaks volumes to just how good they feel and the quality for what you're getting. Yeah. I yeah. think it's fantastic. And when you go in ready to spend $250 on a knife, yep. and then you walk out with three Civivis for less money. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> You and can do that. So another one that you guys really knocked out of the park um, in the Wii line was the Thug. Yes. That thing was super, yes. super popular, especially the carbon fiber version. Now you've got a really lightweight Civivi version. Yep. Brand new, coming out uh, very, very soon, is the Thug 2. That's available in Micarta in a couple of different flavors. Um, it maintains the same blade grind. Yes. So you got that you got that super interesting tanto with the hollow ground um, and uh, and the flat ground blade with the swedge on top, just giving it awesome lines. Um, it's kind of like the uh, great thumb stud action, just like the Wii version. Um, Seventy-five bucks. You, you that's price. insane. And Nitro V on the blade steel nitro too. V so you're getting a really good quality blade steel and a really cool knife. It's super cool looking, nice and chunky, but super lightweight uh, that one's definitely going to be coming home with me as soon as we get it in i guarantee it absolutely all right a new fun collaboration we've got a kayla cummings design this one she calls the p87 little thumb stud flipper d2 steel that is absolutely great that i mean it's Nice and small, but you still get a full four-finger grip on you, that. You, you can you can if you squeeze that yeah. in there. Um, th th I like the way that this really locks your finger in. Like yeah. it, it, it's got a good, pretty good grip right there. So I like that. I, I'm a I'm big fan of the blade style. It's really Absolutely. good blade shape. Yeah. It's going to be a fun design for us. Nice small knife. And uh, I'm digging this uh, burlap micarta. Is that what yes. that is? Yes, of course, micarta, burlap micarta. This is a, a new frame lock in the Civivi line. That's wild. Yeah. That is wild. So a Civivi frame lock right there with the nice dark burlap micarta on the on the show side there. And uh, that's another thing that I love. So all of your frame locks, the relief cuts there, the spring cuts yeah. are beautiful. 
they're they're part of the knife design, and I love that that's design. not mm -hmm. uh, a secondary thought, you know. Yeah. It's something that's actually practical, and this is another one of those that multiple opening met methods, so nice and fidgety. That's beautiful. What's the blade steel on this one? Uh, Nitro V, I believe. Uh, no, sorry, 14C28N. 14C28N, and that's a phenomenal, phenomenal blade steel. Yeah, we got a handful coming out in the 14C28N. Nitro V, 14C28N has been what most of our CVV releases yeah. have been lately. So. Now this little, uh, this little, I mean that that worn clip blade, that is there. insane. Look at that! Look at that little claw. That is wicked right mm -hmm. there. So is that a front flipper? It is. A little tiny, little tiny blade, which is really here. I'll just let you go ahead and flip oh, that. Oh gosh, it feels good. Oh my goodness, that is insanely smooth. Let me see if I can get that with my index finger. <laughs> that is so satisfying. G10 on the scales and super thin and slicey. Super lightweight. That's you know you can stick that in your shirt pocket. Like it's it's that that slim and that lightweight. That's perfect for like a gentleman's carry knife, like yeah. very unobtrusive, very slim, going to church or something, or wearing a nice suit, and you need something that uh, is not gonna get in the way. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Now, this one right here says prototype on it. Yeah. Is that gonna be coming out soon? I don't know exactly when. It's another Osap L design. Um, it'll, be, it'll be sometime, hopefully by the end of the year. That's awesome. Seth, thank you so much for talking to us. We appreciate it. And we are super excited to see all these new knives coming in the store. So, folks, stay tuned. We've got more coming from right here at Blade Show 2022. And I've got Jonathan McNeese here, the man, the myth, the legend. Great Dude, to see you, man. Absolutely. And uh, I tell you what, your stuff has been absolutely flying off of our shelves. That's great. And uh, you guys are putting out some amazing stuff. You came out with a 3.5 last year. Yep. And it's been super popular. And this year you've done it in some uh, some different uh, type scales. You've done some milling yep. on the scales. That's right. And uh, got some different versions here. Those have flown off of our shelves. Every one that we've gotten in. And uh, you brought something else new to Blade Show with you. Yes, sir. And uh, we definitely want to take a look at that. So this is basically the 3.5 in an automatic. <laughs> so these are these are done just like all the rest of our stuff with some OEM shops, but all in the U.S. So and these these particular ones are in Magna Cut aluminum handles, titanium clip, and they are snappy. Yes. <laughs> That is so absolutely we're, beautiful. We're really, really proud of these, really happy with these. Been trying to get an auto on the market for years and finally made it happen, so. Well, and we were just talking, you know, you gotta be a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this business. Yeah, and sure. Especially if you're putting a product out there um, that people are gonna take pride in, that, that you want to work. Right, I mean, right. You, a lot of people, you know, they depend on these things. These right. are tools. That's right. Some of them depend on them for their lives. Right. And so you want to make sure you get it right. And I tell you what, it doesn't get more durable than it needs. Well, I mean, these we appreciate that. We, we definitely try. We want them to look good, but first and foremost, they got to work. Yeah. And stay working. <laughs> so when can we expect to see those autos coming into the stores? Uh, pretty soon. We're going. To, we're selling the first ones here. Uh, we may drop a few on our website when we get back. And then probably within the next month, we should start shipping them to dealers. That is awesome. So, folks, keep an eye out. Those are going to be in the store very soon. We're looking forward to it. Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. I, I got to give some props to my fellow Alabama boys. So, <laughs> folks, stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. I've got Randy here with Re8 Knives. What's up? Thank you for joining us, Randy. Um, so, tell you what, you guys put out the uh, the EXO last year, and this thing has been insanely popular. It has. And you know, as soon as we got it in, I looked at that and I was like, I got a feeling about this. And we did a video immediately. I was like, I, you know, I could be wrong on this. I'm, I'm hit or miss sometimes, but I got a feeling that this thing is going to go quick. And we pulled all four of them that we got in and we did a video on it and that was on a Friday. And we posted our video on a Friday and I forgot to take them back down to our sales floor and I left them up in our studio. I had to come back the next morning because we sold out of them overnight it, mm -hmm. from that video on our website and they called me looking for them because we, were, we had four missing and they were up in our studio. <laughs> and I was like, oh 
oh my gosh, I was actually right about something for once. Yeah. But, I mean, we've gotten them back in once since then, and they've been insanely popular. Now, yes. you guys have got some more of these shipping out soon. I think within about a month, probably. Okay. Yep. And um, we also might have some uh, some a little bit different that you can only get at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Is that right? So we got some uh, we got some specials that you guys need to stay tuned for uh, with these exos. These things have been insanely popular. This one's gorgeous with that flame look right there. That is absolutely only beautiful. Sixty of them. Nice. And now, Re8 also does some really really cool work. So this is one. Who's the designer on this one? It's Kirby Lambert. Kirby Lambert. Yep. And I tell you what, the fit and finish on Re8 products is absolutely outrageous and you look at a knife like this everything is super smooth you can't feel any seams where that micarta is inlaid um, you've got the anodized pivot collar and this one's kind of like a, a frame lock design um, but it's actually a frame lock cutout right there yeah it's really and, how they do it. yeah kind just of like a liner lock and frame lock at once outrageous and then you take a look at that backspacer in the back right there sure. like that is super cool and everything that you guys do is is like that. Like the fit and finish um, is second to none, and the attention to detail, super smooth, and always top quality materials. Absolutely love what you guys do, Randy. Thank you so much for joining thank you, us. Thank you, man. And thank we're you. really excited to see uh, some new exos coming out really soon. So, folks, sounds good. Keep an eye out for those. Stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. And I've got Anders here. Anders, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for coming. And time. now, okay, I got to go ahead and clear. And I'm going to do this on video. I, I, I didn't want. I, I could have asked you off camera to make sure that I was saying it right. But the name of the company, Hella. Hella. Yeah. So I, we've been saying it right. And I, I actually wanted to do that on camera so that full transparency, everybody knows. Yeah. I was unsure, but I said it with confidence every time. Good. So. I tell you what, we love your products and they fly off of our shelves because they are insanely durable and incredibly well made. And as far as I'm concerned, there's not many sharper knives out of the box than a Hella knife. And you guys have got some really cool new designs here that you guys are coming out with this year. Yeah, we do. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got more designs and more new knives coming out this year than Every before, I think, in one year. That's uh, pretty cool. But it's also one of the reasons is that we celebrate 90 years this year. That's awesome. Uh, so um, the company, obviously, everybody that can count understands that 1932 is 90 years ago. Yeah. 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 So 1932, we, the, the company started by two brothers, and today uh, it's run by the third generation of uh, the Heller family. That's really so. Still a family-owned company. Uh, yeah, still a family-owned company. Company, uh, and uh, uh, it's run by uh, Sven Erik and, and Jan Stefan Halle. That's um, really good. And you know what? Having that information for the consumers out there, I really think gives them a sense of pride, knowing that it's still a family-run business. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you guys obviously, with your fit and finish, take a lot of pride in what you do. And. <clears throat> Greg and I have already picked up these folding knives, yep. and they are absolutely amazing. So let's talk about those first. Cool. Uh, so w we are actually missing one folding knife that we should have here. So Raud, this is this knife is called Raud. Uh, Raud means red. Okay. And it's uh, it's a red wood handle, and the uh, basically uh, Scandinavians are made are known for red-handled working knives. Uh, you know a couple of brands that make them. Yeah. Uh, so we decided to make uh, two folding knives. That's the smallest. And the other red is the equal size of that one with red handles. Uh, thick, very strong constructions. And uh, that's a red small. And then it should be a red medium okay. next to it. But as, as I said before, uh, DHL has the package. <laughs> package of uh, that one somewhere in Atlanta and then we've got the uh, slightly larger Nipa which is a, a full a full grip on uh, my hands which are medium to large 
uh, with the clip that you can flip over to the other side depending on which one you want to carry it. Uh, back lock. And that clip is a really cool feature. That's something you don't find on a lockback knife typically. No, no, you really don't. Uh, and on a, on a you know a traditional folding knife like this, you don't typically see a clip. And I think that's going to be something that a lot of people are really going to love. Yeah, I, I don't know why people don't put them on these kinds of knives before. Uh, I think it's it's really good to have it there. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can take it off if you don't want to. If you want to make a leather sheath for that carry on the belt right just uh, unscrew that and then you've got uh, a knife without the paper nice now I've also got to say I'm a sucker for a Scandi grind on any sort of fixed blade absolutely love it and that's one thing that I love about this line of knives so let's talk about these new fixed blades that you guys have got coming out yeah so uh, first of all we we, uh, we upgraded the tomogamy the tomogamy now have been around since Let's say we uh, did the design together with Les Stroud in 2009, I think. Uh, so 12 years, something like it. So that's an updated version. Uh, Utvara has been around for quite some time and that's the new one. Uh, the Nord knife. Nord means north in Norwegian. Uh, so we, the design and development of this have been going on for about two years. And we actually started off with a totally different shape than this one. Uh, we were looking at the Lachlan knife, the old Loki, the classic, uh, you know which one I'm talking about? Right, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we saw how that was used and uh, wanted to move that uh, development in, uh, in a direction to, to uh, make it into a modern knife. Uh, but then halfway through that, we uh, just uh, started all over again. Uh, made a long knife where the handle is almost 50% of the length. Uh, because of how many different grips you can add oh, and, yeah. and hold that on to. So, um, when we work with development, we're a team of uh, normally, so I'm, I'm in charge of a lot of the ideas, but normally we are three people, three to four people within, within the concept development, uh, with uh, at least one that works in the factory in production. Um, and it's really important to have that person as part and, it, and that person needs to be a knife guy that understands how to use the product right. not, not make them most people in the halifax use them all the time so the shape of this one is, is um is it's really something so, so if you hold it up close uh it's a big blade but it's it's actually not too big for for decent carving right it's, uh, so, sorry, I'm, I'm metric, so this is 3.7 millimeters thick. You okay. will have to tell your audience what, <laughs> has, what that is. Uh, the blade is uh, 147 millimeters long. So, so it's, it's not too thick for a normal carving. Hold it up front, it, it, it's, uh, it's a really good uh, working knife. Uh, for post it you get a really long handle, so you can squeeze it in there, get really good power on it. Uh, if you hold it really far back here, you see this right you could say that this is a beautiful part it's actually uh, a part that's important uh, right. to hold on to it you got a really secure grip back here and now you have a really long long swing weight here so yeah clearing branches and um, chopping a little bit with it um, i think i've used this quite a bit now and uh, uh, it's um, I have really big expectations on this one. I, um, That's beautiful. And and holding it, like you said, it's for such a big knife, it is very controllable. It is very controllable. There, there's small features here, like the uh, if you look closely on the back here, it's it's, uh, it's it's got a little bit of a concave shape right here. Right. Uh, so so if you if I had all the samples through uh, sample production when we tested it. Um, an earlier version didn't have that and if you could feel the difference from with or without that it, it, it's very obvious that that little concave shape yeah. changes uh, the grip uh, radical if you flip it over for a pull stroke and your two front fingers locks exactly. you can feel that there is something happening there that yeah. is different if you didn't have that it would be um, there's, there's details. Right. It's the ergonomics the are like, fantastic. All the knife developers would say that. Yeah. That is details. beautiful. And so when can we expect to see these 
hitting store shelves? Uh, well, they, they shipped from Norway, uh, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, should arrive at the uh, wholesale uh, uh, this week. So I would say two to three weeks they will be in the stores. That's awesome. And they come to me with uh, leather sheets, of course. Beautiful. Like that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Good. With uh, yes, of Nord. course. Nord. Yes. A compass. That is absolutely gorgeous. Anders, thank you so much. We appreciate you talking to us, and I uh, hope you guys have had a good time. And folks, check out. These are going to be coming in very soon, so stay tuned for those, and stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. And I'm joined by Chris. Chris Caven. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, sir. And, uh, you know, we've already talked with Mikkel Willemsen and uh, incredible knife designer. But right now we're talking about all the products that you guys have got going this year. So let's uh, let's take a look at them. These are the production knives. Yes, sir. Um, so none of the custom stuff. But we're talking sub-150 on everything, right? Absolutely everything. Our highest price would either be the wild one here, which is one of our Swedish camp knives. Uh, or the Paragon, they come in at 125. Wow. One of our most popular knives would be the Red E here. It's a smaller knife, the Axis Lock. It's got a reversible clip on it, it's even branded there. We give That's you four awesome. color choices in that, one of them being a rosewood handle. Very popular in Europe. Uh, this one here is basically kind of a small production. We only did 75 of these. Wow. As we move from basically one side to the other, the Paragon, all of our steel is Sandvik 14C. This one with a black powder coating on it. It's got a G10 handle, a very ergonomic style grip. So you can grab it pretty much any way you want to ride. It's a great work knife. It's also got some good tactical capabilities. Comes with a Kydex sheath, check lock on the back. We just talked about the Red E as we start moving our way over here to the wild one. This is basically like an old school camp, Scandinavian camp knife. See that dramatic bevel right there? That's a little bit more indicative of the old time knives they would use up in the north. It's got a fire starter built into the sheath. And this little thing here is to help to scrape off the magnesium. And also you can pick up your coffee cup off the fire. It's got a little bale <laughs> nice. on it. Nice. The last one we're going to look at is called the Chibs. This is the first of our production knives that Miguel and I have been working on since 2014. Basically, all your ball bearings are in there. It's got a liner lock and G10 on both sides of the handle. And just like the Red E, you can go ambidextrous with this, where you can change the clip over from one side to the other. That is freaking awesome. All right. I appreciate y'all's time. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, thank you so much. Folks, stay tuned for more, and keep an eye out for all of these knives at SMKW. And stay tuned for more. I'm right here at Blade Show 2022. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. How's it going, you what is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. And right now, we've got three of the best designers in the business right here. We've got Enrique, we've got Jared, we've got Javi. Guys, so you guys have teamed up to form like this super group. Like, you're oh. like the Avengers now of the knife community, <laughs> is, is what I'm thinking. So, what have you guys got going on with Superlative? I'll let you know. <laughs> Enrique is very comfortable speaking, as you can tell. We, we've started this company, our first one is kind of like our foray. A friend of mine referred to it as like the hey baby of what we're going to do. This is our ease into how, how we think outside of the box. So this is the uh, Cannibal. This is the first round that we did with Blade HQ and all black that and a bunch of wicked. different variations. But Fun little pattern that's not too controversial yet, but we're going to come up with some crazy stuff. Nice. So this is a collaboration between everybody here. And yes. Yes. I mean, we know you guys think outside the box, but coming together and putting your minds together for designs, that's really cool. Like, And we last year we met you, Enrique, and we talked about your designs, kind of your uh, inspiration and how you liked traditional designs, but you wanted to make it more modern. Yes, sir. And uh, I mean, love what you guys are doing. And the fact that you guys have Thank teamed you. up, I mean, I, I think that's unstoppable. So, when can we expect to see these hitting retail shelves? So, these have actually hit stores already. Okay. And we are just about out. 
So I think we, we have a, a one or maybe another variation that we're going to be dropping on our website. Okay. But then soon after that, we have like probably uh, four to five SKUs or products. Right. That, not necessarily just knives, too. we got a couple other things up our sleeve that we'll be, we'll be dropping. Over. So when can we expect to see that stuff? Um, Within the next month, we'll have the next product launching. Yeah, now, the, where can the folks find that? So that's going to be dropping on your website. On our website at superlative.com. Superlative.com. You gotta spell it right. <laughs> we don't know how to right. spell around here. And Nikki took all the E's, so we didn't have any love for Superlative. <laughs> there you that's go. really cool. Well, guys, thank you so much. We yes, really sir. appreciate it. You guys are awesome, and keep knocking it out of the park, folks. Stay tuned for more from right here at Blade Show 2022. What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, SMKW.com, and I'm here with the man, Doug Ritter. Dude, I tell you what, as far as people in the knife business that do more for knife rights and do more for the knife industry, there's not anybody better than you. Thank you. And uh, we, really I'll, appreciate, I'll that. we really appreciate all the hard work that you do, and I know the consumers out there do because you're the one making it possible for people to own the things that they've always wanted to own. And I couldn't do what I do without the support of folks like Smoky Mountain. I mean, unfortunately, it takes money <laughs> yeah. to do what we do. 37 bills, pass repealing knife bans in 25 states since 2010. That's amazing. And this week, we got a bill pa another bill passed in Ohio to finish up Ohio, another bill passed in Louisiana to finish up Louisiana. It takes money to go to the state house. Um, and this is a great time to support Knife Rights, because if you go to kniferights.org, you can make a donation and get in a drawing for, at this point, I think over $140,000 worth wild. of knives, guns, all kinds of cool stuff. And you not only get to pick your prize, but you get to support Knife Rights so we can continue the battle. Exactly. And I tell you what, Folks, you gotta you gotta understand. Legislation does not come cheap. I mean, you're talking about no. lawyers. You're talking about paperwork. You're talking about long legal battles to get this stuff through. Uh, and New York, nine and a half years. Yeah. Case That's, headed to the Supreme Court. Two vetoes by the governor, but we got the job done. Exactly. Um, and you know, expenses have gone up. Everybody knows about inflation. <laughs> right. You know, I, I just spent two thousand dollars to fly a lobbyist on a day's notice to a hearing in Pennsylvania. Wow. Okay? That would have been uh, maybe a $700 trip a year ago. Exactly. Exactly. Okay? And that's not first class. That's sitting in the middle seat because yeah. that's all that was available. <laughs> so the costs are going up, but we continue to get stuff done. I'm hoping to reach 40 bills passed by before the end of the year. we still got Pennsylvania going. Uh, that bill got out of the house uh, 202 to 2. You know, we, we are the only Second Amendment organization that gets support yeah. from the other side of the aisle. Right. Uh, it's criminal justice reform for them. Most all our bills pass with bipartisan majorities, often unanimously. So we're unique. But that's how we've managed to get all this stuff. Absolutely. So, Doug, thank you so much for joining us, folks. You go to kniferights.org kniferights.org make a donation you're going to enter yourself to win uh, i mean you guys have got a slew of stuff that you're giving away all these custom I mean, knives and everything that you see here i mean we're going to have that many winners so yep. i mean that's fantastic and uh, we really appreciate all you guys do keep plugging away at it um it does not go unnoticed and, and it means a lot to us thank you so much thank you sir stay tuned for more from blade show 2022